going on everybody hope y'all are having a good one uh, today we're gonna do some serious multitasking here uh, we're gonna put two trucks head to head uh, while testing multiple changes on both trucks at the same time so this could be interesting um, I guess I'll start with introductions here uh, if you've been seeing any of the videos on here before you'll know this is the Gapra um, the biggest change that I've made on this one is these tires these are the 2-2 two -two ruptures that I did not have any luck with a couple videos ago um, I cut them down uh, about a half inch uh, so they're still the same width but they're about a half inch shorter than they were before um, that was my first time doing a full-blown cut and shut so I wanted to try it on a set of tires that didn't really care too much about before I do a set of crawlers so we're gonna give these a run uh, see if they hold up and see how they do um, other than that I think the only real change that I've made on this truck here is um, I went back to a regular spur and pinion got rid of the belt drive and I took the shock bands off of the rear um, everything else is the same as it always has been uh, four steer capper axles high clearance links uh, three gear trans hobby wing fusion 1800 and two three brothers g13 pro servos uh, both of these trucks are running 3s batteries 2200 milliamp and they're both running on a fly sky radio uh, this particular chassis uh, i think it's the power hobby chassis maybe um i don't it's a off-brand 10 to carbon fiber flat rail with a forward and angled skid so that should be about everything uh, with this one. It does have some overdrive. I honestly couldn't tell you how much. And it's got brass on all four corners. Now for the new guy who has been broken in properly. Uh, the body's got its fair share of scratches and whatnot already. Um, I took this thing over and ran it at the indoor comp this past weekend and did not do worth a damn with any of my trucks really but especially with this one so I've got some learning to do here but nevertheless I don't think I've properly introduced this thing yet um, I had a video made basically i just had to edit it um right before the thousand dollar cash comp and i needed storage space so i deleted that whole video so i'll have to run through this one again um we'll start out with the body here it's a junior mortician body that unfortunately i've had to cut the front fenders and the headlight area off was really wanting to keep that um got a i don't know a little cow piece make it look like it's got a cow hood i bought that for another project quite a while ago but that thing requires a large flat hood area and this is the only thing that i've had so far that could accommodate that so it's got a cow hood um, the Mohawk is just a stick on, uh, Mohawk for a motorcycle helmet. Um, 
cannot, cannot rem ever remember the brand name of these wheels, but they are uh, one nine bead locks, um, adjustable offset, and they are a uh, camo splash anodized. So they look pretty sweet. I've got all four of them set up at the uh, narrowest offset at the moment because get the body off here i am running a capra front axle and a ar-45 portal from a 10-3 in the rear so the front is wider than the rear um this is i believe that this was supposed to be a chassis for a 10-3 um off-brand amazon carbon fiber flat rail except this one is uh not a forward skid i think it does have a little bit of an angle to it but not much um, so i guess this one would just solely be designated a lcg flat rail chassis um I am running a Stealth X transmission with the 12% underdrive in the transmission as well as some overdrive in the front axle. So this thing's got a good bit of overdrive. Um, let's see. I've got a Fusion. I think this is a... Yeah, this is a 1800 also. Also on the Fly Sky with the 2200 3S. Also running a Three Brothers G13 Pro steering servo and the new uh, Atlas Micro Pro winch. So that's pretty cool. This will be the first uh, compy style rig that I've had with a winch. But I figure that's probably going to make things a little bit more fair, seeing as how the Gapper's got four-wheel steer, and this only has front steer. We got a winch, so everybody's able to use all of their weapons for this head-to-head. -head. Um, and both rigs have identical shocks all the way around as well. 90-millimeter uh, Desert Lizards. And the shock bands that I took off of the rear of the Gapra, I put on the front of this thing here. Um, let's see, this also has high clearance links and a link riser in the rear. I believe that is it. So, yeah, I would consider both of these uh budget comp style builds um honestly the most expensive part of both of these is the axles and the servos everything else is pretty cheap so it'll be interesting to see uh see how they do head to head with all the changes that i've made testing new tires um, just all kinds of new stuff going on here so i have no idea what's going to happen but it has been fairly dry for a few days so fingers crossed hopefully we don't have to worry about getting our tires caked in mud uh, i've got a short window here of nice weather so figured today would be the day to come out and uh see what these things got i do have a few gates that i'm gonna set up for this head-to-head -head test here and that's also something new i honestly don't know that i've ever actually set up any gates out here in the pit so yeah we will see how these two uh compare against each other and on their own with the changes that have been made um yeah see if we can come out of here with uh 
two running trucks, hopefully. So I'll get them uh, fired up, get the bodies back on, throw some gates out, and we'll have a little rumble in the pit. Well, we're going to start this out on the easier side of things. Just to get a little bit of a warm up going on. So we've got a total of four gates. Um, I made these ones a little bit wider because both of these rigs are wide and because I'm going to try to hit some lines that I don't normally hit. So the orange cones will be the last gate of each section. And then the green ones, just normal gates along the way. So we'll get started here with the gapper. This one here is going to be interesting, just the way the gates are placed. It's going to force your uh, rear diff to try to get hung up on that center rock. Should be able to steer around it with the four steer, but the rock hawk's definitely going to have more problems on that one. Same with this one here, this big rock directly in front of the truck. You're going to end up getting high centered on this thing if you don't choose your line very strategically, which is not going to be easy to do, especially with the other truck. Four wheel steer definitely makes things a lot easier. I'll just go ahead and hold the camera and drive this one. There's no good place to set the phone up. tricky part about the top of this little bridge here is the loose rocks on top of the plastic bridge. They will move around and kick you off of them sometimes. But no issues. Like I said, I wanted to start things out easy before they get difficult. So once we get to a point where I decide to use the winch, that will in fact be the first time I've used this winch on this truck. Um, aside from spooling up the winch line, I haven't, uh, haven't used this one at all yet. So there may be a little bit of uh, I don't really know if I want to call it a learning curve, but it's going to take some getting used to because of the switch that I got the winch on and how I drive and hold my remote and whatnot. But 
I'm sure we'll get that figured out here at some point today. Going up against a four wheel steer rig. I, uh, I don't see us not getting through everything. Or I don't see us getting through everything without having to use the winch for something. Especially once we get to the harder part of the course. Now this is where it's going to get interesting. Hopefully having that rear axle a good bit narrower. Yeah, it actually helps. But that transition back to the next gate is gonna be a little tricky. I'm not really counting points uh, or reverses or anything like that. This is just for testing purposes and having fun. I'm not the biggest uh, quote unquote comp guy. Gates have never, gates and timers have never really been my thing. definitely after the performance I did not put on this past weekend at the indoor comp definitely need to uh, start practicing if I want to improve any yeah spin it around there we go that actually worked out pretty well now, as long as I can keep my rear up above that gate. Oh yeah. Not too shabby. Uh, these are Proline crawlers in the predator compound and the foams are uh, a homemade concoction of uh, dual stage foam setup I do have brass clamp rings in the bead locks as well foams in the shorter 2-2 ruptures they're just the stock foams that have been uh, cut down somewhat strategically so yeah made it through the first portion here gonna relocate the gates up to hard line and uh, we'll really get this party started set up ready to go tried to make this somewhat fair um, this is a tough line for most rigs so I got the gate set pretty wide however I've got them set in such a way that even though you've got some wiggle room on both sides you still have to take mostly the hardest line up through here so got the first gate i did this one a little bit higher than uh this section here especially for not knowing how these rigs are going to do on these tires and whatnot so there is a little bit of room to come up and around that ledge but after that you got to hug the hug the tree come up through here stay as high as possible same through here there is no taking the easy way around the roots to the right you have to go up and over them to get through that gate and then the final gate 
obviously got to get to the top so we're gonna send gapper up through here first and see how it does on these tires now obviously with both rigs i'm gonna try to get them to go up the hardest section here at the beginning uh, before I cop out and kind of take the bypass. But I'm not sure if the tires are going to be good enough to bite or not. It's kind of looking like I'm not. Kinda. Just barely snuck that one by. Now the way I had to do the hexes on the gapper here, uh, the rear end is actually wider than the front right now. Um, just because of the portal covers that I have um, the, the portal covers on the front, I'm able to run a very skinny, uh, wheel hex, but on the back, I've got to run a wider hex, uh, otherwise the, uh, tighter, the wheel itself ends up rubbing and binding up on the portal cover. So I'll, uh, if I end up deciding to run these tires on this thing uh, more often, then I'll find a happy medium. But for now, I just wanted to see how they performed overall. So far, they're doing way better than they did at the full 2-2 two, two height, but I still don't think that they're doing quite as good as the 1-9 ruptures that I normally run on here. Um, now part of that could be due to the width. Oh, I just realized that I forgot to move the camera, so I've been sitting here talking with nothing in frame. Sorry about that. And anyways, the uh, with these tires being so wide, uh, it's kind of spreading the weight out more than what you would want for crawling. So I don't think they're just not quite biting as hard as the skinnier one nines, but they are definitely doing much much better than they did uh, before I cut them I figured if uh, even if they don't do as good as I want them to on the crawler here these will end up probably going on the ecto as a trail tire for all the events coming up this summer so either way, they've got a home. But it is cool to see them doing much better than they did uh, before I cut them down. sun is just in the wrong spot I'm gonna have to probably leave the camera right here and I guess you can kind of see you can barely see that top of the cone to the right there 
definitely see the one on the left. It's not the best view, but this is the only shady spot where I can keep the camera at the moment. So we'll see how she does at the top of hard line here. It was really struggling the last time I brought them up here when they were full size. Honestly, don't know if it even, I don't think that it made it up this. I got to go back and double check. But if it did make it up this before, it was a battle. And it's already doing much, much better. Now it's just going to be finding the line that it wants to take with these tires. Since these things are so wide, it's hard to tell where it's going to get the most grip at. Okay, we might be on to something here. It just cleaned hard line. I was uh, not expecting that at all. Like I said, these tires at the full 2-2 height, if it made it up the top of hard line here, it was a long drawn out battle and it aside from a couple little slips it just walked it um i may end up having to uh, bring these back here another time and uh swap back and forth between these and the one nines and do like a head to head and see if they're uh doing as good as I think they're doing right now actually even on the descent they are biting way harder that is awesome it looks like a damn monster truck but they are doing really well Rockhawks got uh got some big shoes to fill here all right we'll try to take as close to the same line as possible here at the bottom and see if it can make the harder side i've clear up this entire bottom half of the hard line here the further left or the closest to the uh log as you can stay the harder the line is so that's why a lot of the times you see me trying to crawl up on the log itself um, so that's that's as hard as it gets It. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but that's pretty cool. You can see each individual lug biting for traction there on the edge of the root. Ah, well, I guess you probably can't see it there. There 
it is. Ugh. All right, I gotta set this back down. I just wanted to show that off. That was pretty cool. Watching that thing bite like that. I think if I work at it, I could probably get it right here. Oh, it is so close. There's like one little one little notch right there that I've got to hit at just the right moment. driver's side tire is on a ledge down here at the same time as that front one. sake of time I mean just try to get this thing up here get to that first gate I'm pretty sure that if I fought that one for a little while I could probably make it but I don't want to spend all day on that and I'm getting myself all kinds of hung up on that little rock there. Let's see if we can get around the bypass here without getting hung up. on up uh, let's see yeah you can see both of the cameras there Do a better job at keeping an eye on the camera this time around so you don't miss anything. Alright. I'm probably better off just holding this thing. To get a better view. my rear passenger tires getting hung up in between the two uh, chunks of asphalt there and the 
if you're not careful that will flip you right over backwards real quick I don't know if I'll be able to make it to the bottom side of it or not but give it a give it a chance here before uh, I back all the way out and start over there if we get that back tire up on this rock nope just missed it Oh, it made it anyways. That's cool. Can't really hate on that. It didn't take the most extreme line up through there. But for being super low and front steer only, it snaked its way up through there pretty good. see what it's got on the top part of hard line here and losing my shadow here already I'm not sure if this thing made it up this section last week when I had it up here or not. I'm kind of thinking that it didn't. Just uh, where this wheelbase puts these tires, it's not the greatest. Okay, well, I'm not sure exactly where that video stopped at. Uh, I hit uh, storage capacity on my phone. So I had to go delete some stuff. So we're back at it here. I'm right on the edge of either cresting that or falling back. I'm afraid if I try to move closer, I'm going to hit the steering just wrong. Yep, just like that. I just wanted to see where my tires was here. There's a really fine line with these tires here. They definitely like the slow crawl, but you still got to keep enough wheel speed that when it bites, it picks itself up over because it gets slippery again real quick. Okay. That was what I needed. Now I can get back down here. It's not real easy to stand on the side of this hill while you're driving. I'll tell you that much. All right. Now we'll see what we can do here. Really hoping my rear passenger tire doesn't fall in that hole and catch my diff. Kind of 
like that. Ooh. That was too far. Okay, now we got her back out of the hole. Oh no! That's what I'm saying, there's a fine line with wheel speed on these tires. Especially on this slippery concrete here. It's got a thin layer of mossy stuff on it and it uh it used to be really grippy but not no mo ah. Tried to cross up for some traction and that came back to bite me. Okay, going a completely different route. Taking this left side usually doesn't work out for rigs too often but since this thing is so long it might just work i wasn't expecting that yeah. now i got the diff hung I'm afraid if i cut back to the right it's gonna want to roll back on me I can keep that front passenger tire above the concrete line. Might be all right. Calm down, I'm starting to get crazy. But I've got that, that rear axle is diff hung like crazy. So, I'm thinking instead of wasting a bunch of time fighting this, uh, I'm gonna set the camera down and uh, we'll spool out the winch for the first time and uh, see what we can get going here. winch point here since I'm so close to that cone 
see if we can get it to watch in this hole. Oh yeah. Okay. So this is gonna be the tough part here. Cause I've got this winch set up on channel four and that that switch is uh, in a rough spot for the way that I drive. So I think I'm gonna have to switch hands whenever I wanna use the winch. No, that's not gonna work. Okay. It's a little clunky. I'm gonna have to uh, see if I can get that winch set up on a different switch here, cause that was uh, that was no bueno. She made it. All right, now I'm back down here where I belong. We'll see, uh, even though it's not part of the course, it's always good to see how, uh, how the rigs descend down this particular part of the climb. And then we'll uh, go set up on an even harder line. I'm pretty sure that I could have made that climb, but it would have been a battle for a little while. And uh, I'm just not really trying to make this video any longer than it's already going to be. They seem to be pretty evenly matched on the uh, grip. They both descended pretty well. So, well, that's all she wrote for hard line. Both trucks cleared that. I think that uh, the impossible line is, is where we're gonna hopefully see a clear cut champ in here well for this line here there's really no need for any more than just the one gate at the top uh, it's not a very wide nor a very long climb so this is a pretty much if you can make it through the cones at the top you're a baller kind of a situation um yeah that's pretty much all there is to say about this particular line here um i have made it up a couple different ways uh, with the gapra on the one nine ruptures and i think i've made it up with the four wheel steer capra buggy um but i think that that's those are the only two trucks that I've made this climb with. So we'll uh, see how this goes. I'm gonna try to find a spot to set the camera so I can move about. Well, hopefully this camera view does this justice. 
that's the only spot I could find where I don't have any lens flare from the sun. If I had to guess, I'd say this is going to be, uh, be a battle with both trucks if they make it. If not, it'll just be a losing battle. There is a very specific line that, uh, that I could consistently climb with the 1-9 ruptures. So that's usually the line that I try to hit first. Not having muddy tires is definitely already helping. But I don't know if the wide tires is gonna end up being a good thing or not here. Go, go, go. There it is. Alright, that's the first big hurdle. Getting your front tires up to that level. Second big hurdle is usually your rear tires have to follow the same ledge to get up right there. Wow. These cut 2-2 two -two ruptures are really impressing me. It's, uh, it's ridiculous how much of a difference there is with just that half inch of height. These things, like, I was really close to just tossing them the first time I brought them out here. They were not making me a happy individual, we'll say. But uh, the fact that they just ran up this one the way that they did, that's impressive. Very impressive. Coming back down this thing is... Uh, sometimes just as difficult. Yep. Regardless, the gapper on the cut and shut ruptures made it. We'll see if the Rockhawks got it. Okay, let's see what this thing's got. There's really no way that it's going to make it up as easy as the gaffer just did having that four wheel steer on this climb in particular is uh, makes all the difference in the world and i'm already too far up that line Basically, I've, I've got to get my passenger rear tire to follow this uh, 
diagonal ledge that it's trying to get on right now. And uh, that is a lot harder to do with no four wheel steer. it falls down in this hole that it's falling into as we speak it uh it'll just want to pick the truck up and toss it and i'm getting too far sideways now all the way in the hole. I think I'm going to have to try a different approach. I think that that could be a good line though. I just gotta get up a little higher before I cut back. Hopefully that's still within the camera view. This is where it's going to get tricky. Try to keep that rear tire up on that ledge. just missed it I think that's the line though there's no way it'll pull it back nope. well hands down the gapper definitely won this particular crawl but I think I can make it with this. I've just got to get my line perfect. Absolutely perfect. I think we're going to fall in that hole again. Come on, overdrive. Come on, overdrive. Oh no, it's 
it's gone. Okay, we'll try try another angle here and then I'm just gonna chop this one up for the sake of the video. thing about trying to take this left side over here is all the uh, all the dirt that's on top of the uh, chunks of concrete and asphalt the other side's pretty clean at the moment but this left side is uh, definitely a lot dirtier and a lot more slippery expecting it to climb up that as quick as it did. Oh no, it's gonna end up right back in the same damn hole. Unless I can get it to float over. Come on, buddy. Come on. Oh, it is so close. Yeah. I can't believe it floated that tire over that hole. Okay. Gotta get the hook up on the passenger front, which this is a very odd wheelbase for this. If it was just a little bit shorter or a little bit longer, I think I would be in pretty decent shape. Not sure which tire I need to focus on grabbing with first is the problem. It's all four of them are trying to hit a ledge at the same time. Try to super creep it. Just need like another half inch.
See if I can get a little bump out of that. Oh yeah. Holy moly. Well, that is a uh, completely different approach than I've ever taken before. But I think that might do it. Oh, just missed. This is one of those obstacles where it just randomly laid out blocks of concrete and asphalt and somehow there just happens to be little points and ledges to grab onto all the way up. Sometimes they're in exactly the right spot, and sometimes they're in exactly the wrong spot. Oh, these tires are working for it. I could just get that driver front to crest on that top piece, I would be home free. That's going to go up under the tire and kick me all the way back. Damn. That was it, too. Come on, spit that thing out. yourself back to the right. so close ah man 15 minutes on this damn climb here that's got to be getting close to a record
Hey. I wanted to slow crawl it, but I was getting tired of waiting. It did it without a winch. It may have taken 20 minutes, but it did it. Man, I'm glad that's over with. That right there is why that is called the impossible climb. It, it is possible, but damn, it feels like it ain't for most of the rigs out here. So, as of right now, I'd say the gapper is definitely well ahead. Um, I may go ahead and set up one more string of gates and then uh we'll probably call it good all right for this last course it's gonna be kind of a long zigzag course i'll go ahead and walk you through it before we get started otherwise it just kind of looks random so we're gonna run up here i've got a gate on either side of the slide i'm gonna run across the slide go out and around these two gates, down, U-turn, and then up those ridges right there. Got a gate on either side of those. Go across, loop around, and then we're gonna come up this crazy off-camber kind of a transition got them set wide because that's a rough one to get across and then we're going to run across the rock pile however they see fit and then up to this guy i did add a couple uh, concrete logs from a fireplace uh, through those in the crevice just to try to give the rock hawk a fighting chance because that rear axle is so narrow it can't span that gap so if a tire happens to fall in it's got a at least a fighting chance to climb back out and then the finishing gates are right there so we'll give this one last uh one last hurrah here and then we're gonna wrap it up for the day we're gonna we're gonna do this run and gun style so it's not gonna be the best angles probably but this course is so spread out and i kind of need to stay as mobile as possible Zoom out a little bit there. Oh, wow. These tires make that rear end so wide, they're squeezing through that slide. So this course is uh, not as difficult as uh, the last one but 
if you don't pay attention to your tire placement, it can be uh, can be just as dangerous. I'd say this climb here with this crazy off camber transition and a giant death hole that you got to float over that and then that far ridge run over there are definitely the two hardest parts of this particular climb. Gonna have to get the shadow in here a little bit just so you can see how you gotta float a tire over this hole here. Ooh. And that's always a rough spot. It's coming off of the off of that guy there. Pretty much all of my skids get caught on that one. Okay, actually I think I can probably set the phone down here for this final climb. I tried this with the uh, with these tires before I cut them, and it could not do it. So if it if it makes this climb now, that's a huge improvement. And that's already a huge improvement. It had trouble making that up over that first little knoll there. got it yeah man these tires are just blowing me away all right we'll go back mobile again here so you can see the end of the run i am very thoroughly impressed with uh how much better these tires got just by making them a little bit shorter honestly can't believe how good they're doing for being as wide as they are i thought for sure that they would be designated to trail truck only status but they've definitely proven themselves to be uh be a crawler tire that's crazy I would have lost money on that bet for sure. All right, Rockhawk, it's your last chance to prove yourself.
play with the big boys or not. getting hung up on that skid one thing i have thought about changing over i've thought about uh swapping the chassis between these two rigs so i feel like this being the front steer only i feel like it would be better served with that forward skid have a better breakover angle and the Gapra since it's four wheel steer and I can manipulate the rear end around I feel like it would still do all right uh, without that forward skid so I don't know it's something I've thought about I don't know don't know that I'll actually do it or not but Come awful close to that gig there, but I haven't hit it yet. But this is the problem that I've got here. See, I'm bottomed out. Even with that angled skid. thing just digs in does not like to let go yep. got a gate well that's no good oh well I suppose I couldn't go through a hole gated run with this thing without taking out at least one or two i hit damn near every single gate over there at that indoor comp with this thing probably should have named this the gate buster instead of the rock hawk There's another spot where I get hung up on the skid. Actually climbed over it a lot better than I thought it was going to. This will be the first spot where that rear axle being more narrow could bite us. Looks like it's gonna grab and hold though. Just barely. on the skid again Let's see if it can hold grab it yeah buddy oh man it's rough getting off of that thing Especially with the LCG rigs that sit so low to the ground. Okay. Final spot. Might as well go ahead and set this thing up here. And then if I make it 
up like I did with the gapper, and then I'll pick it back up and get the rest of the run. But the problem I always have here is when it's getting off camber, uh, going up over this hump on the left here, it kicks the ass end off to the right, and then I try to correct and come back to the left once I get up to that next hump, and then my passenger side rear tire ends up falling in the hole. to keep it up on the chunks of concrete that it's supposed to be on. Oh, it was right there. Grab it. It's gonna fall in. There it is. Well, we've already fallen in, so we may as well just ride it out and see what happens. Can it come back? I don't know if it could actually pull that back tire back up on there or not. It's getting awfully close to a big hole it could drop down in and be a game over kind of a hole. Oh, oh, we might be, uh, might be onto something here. It's not uh, not exactly the same line, but with the rear axle being as narrow as it is, it's hard to take the same line. How far that fell in there, just trying to keep the other side up on top. This is just too too narrow of a rig for this particular climb. But adding these uh, fireplace logs definitely helped out. say that uh, that was a success for both rigs um, obviously the Gapra did far better than the Rockhawk but uh, it by all rights it should it's four-wheel steer it's got the better chassis um, bigger tires even though they are ridiculously wide which I thought would hurt it, but definitely didn't seem to. So as far as that thing goes, I'm definitely gonna have to come back up here another day with the, the 1.9 ruptures and do a head-to-head -head between the 1.9s and my cut 2.2s. Two um, I'm, I'm thinking 
they're pretty comparable, surprisingly. But the changes that I've made to that thing did fantastic. Um, the changes that I've made to the Rockhawk, it has definitely improved, but uh, that thing's still got a ways to go. Um, definitely needs some tweaking. Um, yeah, but it's for something that I've only driven a couple times and you know just got it put together. It's doing well. So I've got high hopes for that thing in the long run, but uh, still got some work to do there. Regardless, I'm happy. Both of them performed very well. Um, it was kind of fun running gates, even though I set them up super wide and, you know, I this is my home course so I, I run these lines every time I come up here um, so I don't know it's nothing too exciting I guess but it does add a little something something I guess putting the gates out um, if I was to put a time on it as well with the gates um, that probably would make it a bit more interesting but I'm still working around to being the comp guy I guess it's just not ever been my thing it's still not really my thing but it gives me something to do in the winter time when it's crappy outside but anyways I hope y'all enjoyed um, hopefully the weather cooperates and I can get back out here a little bit more often but you know this time of year it's hard to do that but I keep them going as much as I can that's been pretty slow here lately so we'll see what happens right. hope you all have a good one and we'll catch you in the next one later